Right, so hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, the timing of this video probably isn't going to be the most helpful for everyone. But basically, you've seen the title. Now that I'm officially like enrolled in uni, I'm a uni student. Um, I'm now prepared for university, so that makes me more qualified than like a few months ago to make this video. But I don't want to make it in like a year because one, will I still be making YouTube videos? And two, I will have forgotten 90% of this. I've got my laptop because I wrote a blog post on the topic, so I will link that down below as well. But basically my plan is to kind of tell you how to get ready for university for all of the year 12s or anyone that's... I, I don't know when this is going to get uploaded, but this is probably primarily for people that have just gone into year 13. So basically, for a timeline, this video is relevant kind of after you've picked your firm and insurance. After you've been given your five offers, your four offers, however many you've applied for, this is when this will be relevant for you. So kind of like February onwards, like February of the year, you will be going to university onwards. So first of all, join a freshers group chat. I did this in about February because I knew I was going to my first choice. Um, I did not join one for my insurance because I knew I was not going there. But if you have applied for a firm and an insurance and like you know that you could miss your offer for your firm, join the group chat for your insurance. Be active in both. So basically, how to find a freshers group chat? Facebook. You will need Facebook. You can't really find them elsewhere or in another way. Sometimes the student room will have them, but normally the student room will post a link to the Facebook. So if you go on Facebook and you go in the search bar, you just type in University of whatever you're going, 2020 Freshers or Freshers, you'll find lots of groups. Join them all. Um, some of them are like Freshers ticket sales. Don't buy Freshers tickets. It's a stupid idea. Um, but yeah, like just join them all, even if you get spammed with stuff, join them because you might end up in one nice legit one. At the beginning you probably won't talk that much because your group will have, it could have like 600 people in it so yeah like you won't really be able to find your group but eventually they'll start making like offer holder group chats and group chats for your subject in particular so then you can go into your subject group and there'll still be a lot of students but there'll be less and you can start kind of condensing down your friendship group and that kind of thing. I've been in a freshers group chat since about February or March, I think it was about March because that's when I applied for my accommodation and I'm not gonna lie, I was not active in them for many months. The freshers group chats tend to be on Facebook Messenger is where they'll start, they won't stay there, Facebook Messenger kind of sucks. Then they'll go to WhatsApp and then they'll kind of graduate to Snapchat. Um, Snapchat I prefer, WhatsApp's a bit, a bit iffy for me, I get a bit confused because everyone's got a phone number and I just... It also starts automatically saving pictures to your camera roll, so like turn that off because people were sending their pictures of their toasties and I was like, I don't care about the toasties, I don't want that on my camera roll. After kind of results days when your group chats will become more active because you've got a confirmed place. Like some people in there will have an unconditional offer and they will know that they're gonna be there, but most people tend to have a conditional offer. And especially this year, who really knew what was gonna happen? Who really knew if they were actually gonna meet their offer? So after results date is when group chats kind of become more solidified and real. They are very good. I've met some really lovely people on them. I mean, hopefully, hopefully they're all gonna be nice to me. But like, I've met some really nice people. Um, now that we've got our accommodation offers, we've got group chats for our accommodation, like for the block. We haven't got our flats yet, but now that we've got our main accommodation offer and we know like what site we're gonna be on, we've got group chats for the site, group chats for the hall within the site, and then eventually we'll narrow it down to that. So you can really start kind of funneling down your friends um, and it is worth just talking to everyone in the group chats, it really is, there's absolutely no harm in doing it, like just interact with everyone. I would probably put a little bit more effort into the people on your course in your firm choice but do not neglect your insurance if you're not sure that you're going to get in. I mean either way don't neglect your insurance, unless you've got an unconditional offer, join the same group chats for your firm as for your insurance because you could, you could make some great friends on your firm chat and ignore your insurance and then not make the offer for your firm. Just putting it out there, it's happened to a lot of people this year because COVID and Boris Johnson and the government ruining our lives as usual. So obviously at some point you're gonna have to apply for accommodation. For me, 
my accommodation kind of opened up for applications in end of February, I think February 20th it opened. Um, apply ASAP. Obviously this isn't really the most relevant for everyone, but apply as soon as you can because some places are first come first serve, some of them aren't. Um, Sometimes they lie to you and say they're first come first serve and then they're not and then you don't get your first choice and you end up in halls that you don't really like. Personal experience, not me. Have a look at the accommodations you're going to be in. Which ones do you like and which ones can you afford? You will know what kind of student loan you're going to get. Like, you've Googled it, you, you should have Googled it, that's another kind of minor thing. Check how much money you're going to get, because if your maintenance loan is going to be six grand and your accommodation is going to be six grand, how are you going to buy food? You need money left over. Your accommodation should not cost the same as your maintenance loan. My accommodation is almost £4,000 less than my maintenance loan, because maximum maintenance loan things... But yeah, go on the website, do your research, how close is each hall to campus? I made a list, because you normally apply for multiple. I think you don't have to. I applied for four different halls. We have like four or five different sites around my university. Also, if you want private halls, start researching that, because I don't really know how private halls work, but it's probably best to get that all sorted as soon as possible, because with private halls, you can kind of have your place confirmed significantly earlier. Like, I applied for my halls in February, I did not get my kind of acceptance or offer until August 20th. Like, you spend a lot of time waiting. A very obvious thing, but apply for your student finance. Do it as soon as you can. I'm not sure exactly when you become kind of able to apply for your student finance. I don't know if it's... I think you have to have an accept... I think you just have to have applied for university. I don't think you have to have an accepted offer. I accepted my offer before I applied, because I accepted my offer in February, because you had to accept it to apply for the accommodation, so I accepted it anyway, because I knew I didn't want the other ones. Um, but apply, because it takes a while. Um, I don't have a British passport, so I had to send off my birth certificate. There was a problem with my birth certificate, so I had to bring it back and then send it again. Like, it can take you a long time. If you leave it until August, and they don't get back to you, you're stuffed. Like, it didn't take me the longest amount of time to get all of my kind of documents sent back and forth. It took longer than the average person, but the actual getting confirmation of everything did take a while for me. I think it only updated about two months ago that my payments had actually been scheduled and I got my letter in the post saying, by the way, this is the amount of money you're going to get. But also it's very useful to know how much money you're going to get because then you can start budget planning and all of that stuff. Something that's not a necessity but have a look on YouTube if anyone's gone to that university and studied that subject because you can get a better perspective than you got on the open days. Um, like you can find like the secret study spots or like any modules that they said were particularly difficult so that you know oh this one's gonna be hard in first year might do a little bit of revision that's another thing might be worth if you're studying something that you've already studied I mean even if you've not studied it before it is probably worth just having a little recap like if you're studying psychology I, I'm studying psychology, I've studied psychology before, I know I'm good at psychology, I still watched Crash Course Psychology, like 37 videos of it, didn't particularly need them, but it's a nice refresher, and I will probably watch them again before I go to university. Like, if you're studying medicine, find online medicine lectures that you can go to, preferably free, because we love free stuff. Do a little bit of pre-research, you don't have to. But it might be helpful, um, particularly with the whole online learning thing. I don't know how that's going to go, but it might be better to kind of have it all in there because you aren't going to be able to just really sit and have a conversation with your tutors as you probably could have done like last year. Obviously, if you're moving out, you need to buy things. You have to do the IKEA shop. The, you know, it's, it's a rite of passage. You do the IKEA shop. Um, very fun shop. I've got a haul, I'll link it down below because I really, I love buying my stuff. But it's worth making a list and watching videos and finding like things that people have said, oh I regret buying this or oh I didn't think to buy this and then I had to do that. And don't leave your shop too late. If you're moving in in September, you kind of want it done by like middle of August-ish. Because if you go and they don't have everything you need, you're going to need to go somewhere else. And find it but then you've also got to pack everything and organize everything which is a little bit it's a little bit stressful i can't lie that's another thing have a look around your room have a mini kind of clear out 
not necessarily a clear out, but just have a look at what you actually have that you want to take to uni. Like I've looked at things and I've been like, oh, I've actually not used this in about a year. There's no point bringing it to uni. Like some things you might as well take. Like I've got an extra handbag or something that like, if my other one breaks, it doesn't take up any space, why not? But like things like clothes, you don't need them all. You really don't. I'm taking, I would say 60% of my clothes. To be honest, I'm the same size as my mum and my sister. So when I'm at home, I'm gonna steal their clothes. Like I don't see the point in tra like bringing clothes back and forth between my university because I have a very long train ride back um, and I don't really wanna be like trawling through London with a suitcase full of clothes when I can just leave some here. But yeah, related to your student finance thing, start making a budget plan. You obviously can't confirm everything because you won't have your accommodation confirmed, but I made a generic budget plan of how much money I was gonna have per week I did it per week because I preferred that than it being per month. Yeah, make a generic budget plan of how much you're going to have and how are you going to do that? Like, if your uni only has a very expensive supermarket nearby, you're probably going to be spending more on groceries and things like that. That's another thing. Have a look at what stuff is going to be near your university, like food shops. Like, if you've only got an M&S or a Waitrose, you're probably at Tory University. I hate to break it to you, it's just how it be. But like, have a look at what's near you and what's cheap. Um, my university's got loads of supermarkets around it, but I'd rather go to a cheaper one because I'd rather have spare money. Making a budget plan really doesn't take that long. Um, I'm not gonna lie, t it took me a little while because I didn't know how to use formula in Google Sheets, which I thought I did. I remember, I did it in year nine. Um, I've not done it since year nine. But I, did, I did eventually do it for myself. That's another thing related to the budgeting, that kind of thing. Look at bursaries and scholarships. You don't tend to have to apply for bursaries, but I think you have to apply for scholarships. I don't know, there's no scholarships at my uni that I'm eligible for, so there's no point in me doing that. But I've been on the website, they've got a bursary that I'm going to get, and like, have a look how that works. Do you have to apply for it? Are they just gonna give it to you? When are you gonna get it? Are they gonna give you all the money up front? Are they gonna split it across payments? Another thing, disabled students allowance. We love her. I didn't think I was going to be eligible, I am, I got a lot of free stuff, thank you government. Sometimes you let me down Mr Government, but today is not one of those days. Um, but if you have any kind of mental or physical condition that's going to affect your studying, affecting your studying being the key thing, you can't just have a physical condition that doesn't have any impact on your studying and be like yeah I'll get it, because you won't be eligible. But if you've got anything that affects your studying, apply, or you have to have evidence of your illness but I'll leave my video down below on that, it's worth applying, people don't tend to know about it. I only knew about it because when you do the student finance application it asks if you have a mental or physical health condition and I was like, oh, that me? And then it was like, oh, do you want to apply for disabled students allowance? And I was like, no harm in applying at all, just apply, really might as well do it. Another thing, student banking, you don't have to make your account yet, but start having a look at what do you want to do with that? Do you want to move into a student account? Are you happy with your normal account? No, you're not. Um, go to a Santander account because you get the most interest and you get a free rail card. Um, if you're gonna be living at home, rail card might not be any interest in, to you, but I'm not living at home. And my train, I think is like 90 pounds without the rail card. So yeah, but I didn't realize I already had a kid's Santander account. So I just moved my account over so I didn't have to actually like apply for it. If you don't have a Santander account to begin with, it's going to take you a lot longer to set up your bank account. Start having a look at like a timeline of when you need to start doing things. Most of the things you end up doing will be in August around results day, but still, you could start doing things earlier. It really is worth just having a look at everything. If you're one of those kids that just can't do anything, learn to do things. Learn to iron. You don't really have to iron. I don't iron anything, but I know how to iron. Like if, I'm, if I've got a formal event I need to iron something for, I could do it. Also, learn how to hoover. You're going to have to clean your own room and your toilet. Learn how to clean toilets, learn how to clean bathrooms, make your bed, learn how to cook. And not just pasta every night, like carbs, protein, veg. Please. Um, your body will thank you and your immune system will definitely thank you too. Another thing, if you, like me, are on medication of any kind, think about that. Like before I go to uni, I'm going to ask for about two months rather than one month of my medication because I don't know how long setting up with my GP is going to take. 
I've got the link, I know how to register. Work out what GPs are in your area. Does your university have like a health service that you can get your prescriptions from? Because if, if you're not gonna be near your home, you should transfer GPs because then you can get your drugs monthly, weekly, however often you get them without having to like travel all the way home. And also make sure that you do get extras when you go to uni because you might lose them. It might take a while for your GP to get your first set of prescriptions ready. Just, yeah. Obviously because of COVID, I can't really travel down to where my university is and explore. But if you live near your university or just fancy a day trip and COVID isn't really present next year, hopefully, go and have an explore. Have a look at the town near your university. Are there nice parks? Um, what kind of things are there at cinemas? Are there nice things to do? Like just have a look round, get a feel for the town and kind of work out where things are in relation to other things. Another thing, look at the public transport. If you're gonna be living away from home, have a look at how long will it take you to get back home. Depend, I don't know how often you're gonna to want to go home, but have a look at how often you can afford to and how long it will take you to do that when you get there. Also, it might be worth having a look at buses that go around the area, taxis, kind of prices of things like that. Like, our university gives us a bus pass, so I'm gonna start learning the bus routes so I know how long it should take to get from here to here, what bus am I gonna get, and can I actually get space on that bus? The lighting might be different because my mum just decided that even though I'm filming, she needs me to do something, so I'm now back. If you're the kind of person that's gonna want a job, it might be worth just looking in the area to see what kind of things they do. If you currently work in a next, ask your manager if you can transfer over to the next at wherever your university is or something like that because then it saves you a lot of hassle. Not everyone will want a job, but for those people that can't afford to live without the job, you're gonna want to kind of start looking at that and kind of get that sorted as soon as possible. Also, after I kind of confirmed my place, my university sent me an online enrollment thing and set up my student ID card. So if you get sent something like that, do it as soon as you get it. Obviously this is gonna be much later term than the rest of the things, but still, I hate cars. But it's still something that you're gonna end up needing to do to prepare to go to university because you kind of need your student ID to get places. But yeah, I would say that's pretty much everything I kind of did to prepare for university. There might be other little bits and bobs, but nothing I think that you couldn't think of with your own common sense. I mean, to me, a lot of these things are common sense, but some people don't have the same brain as me, so yeah. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it useful. It is a bit of a weird timing to make a video like this, considering probably by the time I publish this, people will either be at university, like people will be at university, this is gonna get published in like two weeks, three weeks after I film it, because I've got other stuff going up, but yeah, I just don't wanna film it in a year, so you're welcome. You're welcome for next year, basically. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, sucks to be you, not my problem. Um, relax, enjoy, get ready for university, it's gonna be calm, it's gonna be good, always chill.